Is anybody gonna be there when I arrive? Is anybody gonna be there when I arrive? If anybody's gonna be there, he'll be looking up at me with an angry stare. Should go to hell. A couple of girls said I would burn very well. I don't mind going to hell with all my friends there. It could be pretty swell again. Yeah. Is anybody gonna be there when I arrive? Is anybody gonna be there? Free Range Sessions, July 1st, 2013. Tonight we welcome the Strange Birds, Ray and Carrie. Thanks for coming, guys. Thanks so much for having us. Thanks for having us. Pleasure to be here. This is awesome. Uh, the first time in the bunker for you guys. Yeah. In the bunker. In the, in the bunker. It's pretty sweet down here. So we're uh, streaming live on our Ustream page here, and uh, we got posts out on Facebook and Twitter and all that stuff. So... Uh, it's all good. We're just waiting for the drones of people to write in and say hi. Come on in, write in. Right in. <laughs> Get another song holograms. for us. What's that? Got another song for us? We do. Boy, do we. All right. It's a song I wrote about uh, Black Sunday, which is the Sunday during the Dust Bowl where everybody woke up in the morning. It was a beautiful sunny day for the first time in months. And uh, everybody opened their windows and put their laundry on the line and went for picnics. And then that afternoon, the absolute worst dust storm of all came through. And um, this is a song kind of told from the perspective of a young girl. It's called Black Sunday. <laughs>
shut the door and we pull the shades and fell to our knees and prayed and it's dust to eat and dust to dream dust in our beds and in the kitchen sink and dust in our Sunday. Black Sunday. That's off our latest CD, our latest album. I always mean to say album. It sounds so much cooler. Well, we were just talking about that upstairs, the, <laughs> the, the vinyl and the, versus the CD versus the MP3 versus the... Well, I think it's funny that, they, that uh, people take the album and then they put it back in their computer in MP3, the, uh, the vinyl. But right. <laughs> <laughs> But like we were saying, it's it's good artwork. You, know, you can you can hang it on the wall, and you can see it without your glasses. Right. <laughs> very nice, very nice key. So this next song is something that I wrote for uh, Rupert Murdoch. And I hope he never finds out. No, actually, <laughs> it's just a song. Well, you'll get it. It's called "The Smile Before the Lie." Like a snake, nobody cares if nobody sees. Take care of business, do your deeds, yeah. Slither like a snake, but it ain't the same on TV. You got to be foxy to do your deeds and smile before the lie, do or die. And I know I'm not the smartest guy, but I get a feeling when. This world, they smile before they lie. To own television and newspapers in the same town, it used to be wrong. Everybody frowned. It used to have laws to keep the snakes on the ground. Yeah, but something happened along the way. We got so down. They say a pack here, a pack there, say la vie. And I know I'm not the smartest guy, but I get a feeling when I hear a lie that I don't know who to trust in this world. Yeah. In this world, they smile before they lie.
In this world, the smile before they lie. Get down in the grass, you can slither like a snake. Nobody cares if nobody sees. Take care of business, do your deeds, yeah. Slither like a snake, all right. Sweet dreams are made of these Who am I to disagree We travel the world and the seven seas Everybody's looking for something, yeah In this world, they smile before they lie in this world, they smile before they lie. They smile before they lie. They smile before they lie. Very nice. Excellent. Thanks, guys. So, how many uh, albums do you guys have out? Officially, probably two. We have one that's kind of out of print. It was an older one from 2000. We officially have three. We have Twisted oh, two, Trees, yeah. uh, Strange Birds, and then the new, uh, the new one, Migrate Birds. should hold that up. I'll hold that up. That's the new one. It's available on CD, baby. That's the 2011, 2013. Go ahead. Solo albums. And then I did one an additional solo album, so... So we have a few. <laughs> but we really just run around with three. Yes, that's right. <laughs> For the most part. So you guys live up in the mountains in Colorado. We're, for those yeah. that don't know, we're in Colorado right now. And you guys live up in the mountains, like actually in way, the Way, way, way up in the yeah, mountains. Yeah, we're on the edge of the frontier at, at about 8,800 feet above sea level. And it, it was in the upper 30s last night sleeping. So <laughs> every night you need a blanket no Sounds matter. Sounds awesome to me. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's pretty great when you're stuck in the in the in the hot. But yeah, Friday uh, I left Boulder. It was like in the 90s, and I got home, and it was like 64. It was awesome. great. Yeah. That's when the drive is worth it. I was gonna say it's worth the commute at that point, right? <laughs> yeah, and that and the the moose you might see on the road and that that kind of stuff. But and I would imagine it's a good uh, creative environment. Yeah, really, really nice. That uh, the forest up there is is a major muse for me. That. That funky little guitar in the middle, I, I, I play that probably more than any other guitar I have, and it shows it. It's a, it's a Martin backpacker, and they're made to be played out in the woods. So, uh, but I nobody can make it sound <laughs> like Ray. <laughs> well, I don't know about that. <laughs> but I it's, do. <laughs> it's, it's a real bargain axe, and yeah, you walk out in the woods, it's almost, you almost can't not write something. Did I say that right? I think so. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Do you, um, so with all your writing, I mean, you both write separately, and then you kind of take take a song to each other. Is that how it works, or do you guys actually sit down together to write? No, we usually do separately, and then we come together. Or we'll I'll have an idea, and the Ray will like put his you know little you know bit in there, and then I'll add to it. And so we have a couple of co-writes on the new album. Yeah, this one was more yeah. collaborative. We 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 both love the solemn the solemn sort of creative process of writing your own song you know it's really fun to share that with other people sometimes but i get greedy i want i want to i want to write it myself yeah the only problem when I you're in a stuck, duo is like know. i'll get an idea for a song and then if i take too long to write on it then ray will come up with the song before <laughs> i do and so then i'm like no wait a minute man that's my song <laughs> that was my idea he's <laughs> like man you got to get on it <laughs> so one of the songs coming up um I'll, when we get to it i'll, I'll explain about that because uh yeah cool and is it the same with the music too or do you always do you always write with a guitar or or do you just jot notes down and then figure out the music part later? No. No, always like write. Carrie's writing something that's just come from a melody right now and uh um so she'll be like, What changes you think work with that? And uh so we certainly are more collaborative than we used to be. Mm -hmm. Um just because, you know, you you kinda get you 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 hit your own dead ends as an artist and then so the person around you that really knows you best can help you kind of you know nudge up out of that little dead end you know yeah mm -hmm. and so no, I totally it's agree. a good thing yeah 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 cool yeah well, what do you got next 
Uh, we got a song that uh, I like to say I'm a frustrated world changer because it just never seems to uh, go the way I'd like it to go. <laughs> but uh, that could also sound bad, I guess. This song is called Something. If I try to be discreet, you may not hear what I've got to say. To hide my thoughts in a metaphor is tempting, but then they stay that way. percussiveness in you guys' tunes. Thank it's you. It's always, uh, you know, you've got the little shakers and stuff, and you've got uh, you got a little drum thing for your feet. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got a little thumper. Boom. Yeah, those things are cool. 
We like it's to. It's especially uh, funny when he steps on it when he doesn't mean to. <laughs> <laughs> or I step on something else on it, you know, like yeah. the. Uh, <laughs> More cowbell. More cowbell. So. Can you do a low rider? Like that? Uh, <laughs> almost. <laughs> you know, we were actually thinking. <laughs> Right. You walked right into that yeah. one, buddy. Yeah, we were talking about that the yeah. other day. Anyway. Carrie, why don't you give him a little... Uh, hint on so here's song. an example of a song that I had an idea to write, and then Ray was chomping at the bit to write it, and I, I had been recovering from some pretty major knee surgery, and um, he finally just... We went for a walk one day, uh, and he said, look, you got to write the song today. And uh, I said, okay. And we did. We wrote it just in that one day. And it's a song about Tom Horn, who was... Uh, uh, fellow who went after cattle wrestlers. He worked for cattle barons up in Wyoming, and he was framed for the murder of a young boy named Willie and hung in a method using water. And his brother brought his body back to Colorado to the Columbia Cemetery up in Boulder and um, buried him there. And then 90 years later, almost to the day that he was um, hung, he was found innocent of his crime from DNA. So I went up to his cemetery and I lay down up against this tombstone and said, I um, wrote this song for you, Tom, and it's kind of what I feel is a story, your story, and you know, if you want to give me a sign, that'd be pretty cool, and this is a true story. A wind came up, and I had a skirt on, and it blew it over my head, <laughs> and I thought, well, that's pretty weird, and then it happened again, so Ray thinks the second time was Steve McQueen, who played him in the movie. <laughs> it's called Blood on the Moon. Blood on the moon. So how did you learn about this this fellow? Who, oh, uh, we were playing Pearl Street Pub, and um, there was a big poster of him on the wall. And I kept, you know how those old uh, p time pictures, the people all have like these really grim faces and beady eyes. And so I just kept looking over. I'm like, who is this guy? And I went over, and I uh, saw that it was Tom Horn. And then um, 
I went and did research because you know I work part time at the Boulder Public Library too, and so I did a bunch of research on him and found his the whole story. It's fascinating. Wow, it story. is fascinating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really cool. It's really and cool. and and the movie is quite good. Steve yeah, McQueen Steve did a really cool job. He's, it's a great movie. I keep looking at the speaker. I'm talking to Travis because he's <laughs> in the other room. I'm, I'm like Oz. I'm <laughs> speaking to movies. You need a face on that thing, <laughs> <laughs> like a no, funky no, little happy you face. You need to put uh, his photograph back there so we look this way. It's like when yeah, you're like when Oz. you're Skyping and you always want to look at the person instead of the little camera. You know? Yeah, it so entice uh, production value. We've we've talked about putting cameras everywhere in the house, and <laughs> you know I can cut between me, you, the dog upstairs, <laughs> you know, the bathroom, the bathroom. It's <laughs> awesome. So back to um, your your uh, mountain retreat, I guess you'd call it, or your home. It's our home and studio, it's yeah. Stu so you record up there as well? Oh, yeah. 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 That's that's where all your albums come from? Yeah, I mean, we, I, I started engineering a long time ago, and just, uh, I, I've always been the kind of person that, that if, if, you know, if I want to do something that's a really expensive thing to do, I figure out how to kind of do it myself and make it cheaper. And um, so I, uh, I started recording probably about uh, close to 20 years ago now, and just experimenting. And back then it was a cassette deck, and then it grew to an eight-channel uh, contained unit, and then it grew to Pro Tools with you know eons of tracks. And, and then and we met David Glasser and James Tuttle, and so we, as we do our little recordings, we take the mixes into James, and then we always master at their show. David's. Yeah, those guys are great yeah. support, but. Uh, it's the, like the, the best house of both worlds, just, right? What's that? It's the best of both worlds. Yeah, absolutely. Being around here, having having that mastering facility, yeah. but uh, having the house full of gear was really fun. And when we recorded our new album, we did it really organically um, in the dining room, which had kind of a wood floor and more of a bright sound. And we were just just recording with mics, no line inputs, no headphones, and uh, facing each other with the mics in just the right spots. And uh, uh, they sat there for about a month, I guess. We tracked. Wow. And, then, and then we mixed it really it quickly. It was only hazardous at night when we were, you know, getting up in the night or anything. Yeah. You don't have to be careful because it was easy to run <laughs> into the mic. Yeah, so we whenever the muse struck, yeah, yeah, yeah. you we just kind of turned it on and yeah. went, right? Yeah, yeah. pretty much. We're so how did uh, how many tracks are on the new album? Um, there's, I think, there eleven. Eleven. <laughs> <laughs> eleven. All, all originals. Right. Yeah. 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 Yeah, all originals. Yeah. And, and all of them are just the two of us, except for the very last one has a fall mountain has a little production on it and Ray was like oh we can't put it on the album I said yes we are and it ended up being a honorable mention for him at Telluride this year so that's yeah. awesome that's yeah. great yeah yeah every once what, in a while what do you got for us next oh uh, this next one uh, is from the album and this is called baby mm-hmm and I, I, it's probably self-explanatory so I'm gonna, I'm gonna let it rock helps if I turn my mute off. Okay, there we go.
Baby. I can mm-hmm. tell you guys um, live together because the, <laughs> the, the singing is, in, is impeccable. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Well, we've been working really, really hard this year. and uh, mm-hmm. Well, we've been working really hard for a few years, but like the, the, real, the real gig work has really come about big, big time this, this year. And it's been, uh, been really nice. You know, our previous album, we got a top 10 local release of 2011 uh, review by the Marquee Magazine, and uh, so that w- that was a really nice little accolade, and then we just got a nice four-star review on our latest. So um, we're getting a little good, bit of it? getting a little bit of nice and, feedback. And, and, and you know. baby left for college, so we get to travel now, which is kind of cool too. Nice. Yep. Hey Joe. Hey Joe. Hey Joe. Sucker. Hey Joe. What Still are you my baby, honey. What are you doing with that gun in your hand? Different <laughs> Joe, right? <Yeah. laughs> we stopped saying that a few years yeah, ago. Yeah, we did. It wasn't cool anymore. <laughs> <laughs> our buddy, uh, our buddy Court McCumber's watching. Yeah. All right, Court. Hey, dude. He's in the social stream here. Wish you were here. Any questions out there? Oh, um, don't get Court going. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he has too many secrets about all of us in this room. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, we had a real fun night with them, uh, James Moores and Court McCumber, and uh, I've been listening to their album the last two days. I drive up and down the canyon, and I just, oh my gosh, it's so good. I love the cello. Yeah. I'm glad Court went back to his roots. Well, we, yeah. we played the other night with them, and, and, he, and he whipped his cello out on one of our songs that we're going to play a little later, and uh, it was very, very cool. You don't hear that all the time. No. He no, whips you his don't. cello out. No. You don't. No. Not, not many people uh, yeah. can rip on cello and violin and mandolin and banjo yes. and guitar and tenor I played guitar clarinet and in school, and there's not much call for that. I, I wish I had done cello or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> Ocarina was my first thing, but you know, I stuck with guitar. <laughs> I think uh, Zither was my first thing I ever picked up. <laughs> All right, what do we got next? We got a song uh, called Henny Walker. It's about a woman kind of looking over her life in the early 1900s um, in the mining camps of Leadville. Penny Walker is my name, here's my story and it's true. I've been living in Leadville since 1852. Came out in the fall from southern Illinois with my husband Jack and our baby boy. Search for Search for silver and gold 
knew someone got hurt And I go running through the snow Tripping on my skirt well, They brought my jack down I remember to this day For silver and gold Took the light of his soul Where are you now When I need you the most There ain't no father, son Only a ghost Search for silver and gold Took the light of my soul Search for silver Annie Walker. Another historical piece. Yeah, it's funny. I have like three historical songs on this new album, and then Ray's are all, all his songs are like contemporary songs about the issues at hand today. So it's kind of an interesting little little you know, balance. Touch. We find our balance, yeah. you know. So did you did you guys um, play music and have your own sort of musical career path before meeting each other? Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean we both had given up music for a while because of uh, uh, family things. I, 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 I was in a, a marriage where I, I had just gotten out of music for a while just to get away from it. And uh, Carrie had some had kids, and uh, yeah, so that was, that was her getaway. And then we um, I had also moved 2,200 miles from my music base, which was Connecticut, New York area. And... Um, so I was starting all over. I didn't know anybody. And <laughs> in the summer I met Ray was at uh, Folks Fest in 99, and um, I had just come out with a new album that was produced by Mark Oblinger. And um, so my friends who were on the album came out. We did the band, you know, band, uh, you know, the band thing. Band show. Band show, thank you, at the Boulder Creek. And a bunch of shows, and when they left, they said, well, hey, we love playing with you, but you got to find someone local. And so that year at song school, I met Ray. And we started just playing a little bit together that that fall, so things just we've just been doing it ever since, yeah. and and have morphed into our style. You know, at first it was just Carrie had a three-hour gig and only an hour and a half worth of <laughs> yeah. music. So, so it was like, I hey, said, can you I help me out? Said, hey, uh, my name is Carrie Munner. What's yours, and where do you live? That's what I said to him. And then he goes, my name's Ray, and that's my dad's name. It's like, ah. Oh. <laughs> I love my dad, don't get me wrong. But um, So then I said, well, look, I have a three-hour show. You, I have an hour and a half. And he's like, yeah, I got an hour and a half. So that was kind of our first collaboration. And Ray was kind of more coming from a rock kind of thing, and I was coming for more from a folky kind of thing. So I think, you know, we've just become a real solid blend through the years of coming and finding our own voices and then style, and that's been a nice, really wonderful thing. That's yeah. great, yeah. yeah that's and fun. as we were talking before, you know, it's hard to, uh, for anybody, I think, to play solo, you know, and to rely on yourself to, yeah. to do that. So that's oh, tough, yeah, you know. Tough. And and you get the, after you play with somebody for a while, you get that inner working. You know, you know what the person's going to do. There's yeah. an intuitiveness for sure. A good example yeah. of that is Moore's and McCumber. If you watch those guys play together, it's just it's they're kind of our inspiration, and it's just like. Well, let's not talk too much about well, that. Well, I know, I know, but, but the guy they, is they watching, are, think, you know, really right cool to watch and to learn from. They are great. Yeah. It's always good to see good, really good people do do their thing, and then it, yeah. it, 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 it and helps nice you lift too, up. And they're nice, And they're nice. even better, and you know. Nice. <laughs> yeah, it helps when they're nice people. Yeah. Yeah, and you like know. David uh, Rawlings and Gillian Welch, we love watching, you know, YouTubes oh, yeah, of them. Oh, yeah, totally. And, I mean, Speaking of which, I have a request. I, mean, I didn't even talk to you about this before. Oh, okay. My wife loves the song that you guys do off their new record. Oh, The Way It Goes? The, the Way It Goes. She loves yeah. that song. She's like, you need to start playing that song. I'm like, I don't have to. The Strange Birds already did it. So. <laughs> we have it on our, our list. We could do it next if you Let's like. Let's do it Well, right anytime now. you want. I just okay. thought I'd throw it out there. Why don't we do it now, then? Since yeah. you mentioned it. One of our favorites, too. The Strange Birds on Free Range Sessions, July 1st, 2013. Thanks, everybody, for watching. 
Um, we got uh, we got a lot of time left here, so I'm really stoked to hear some music. All right, girl. Becky Johnson bought the farm, put a needle in her arm, and that's the way that it goes, that's the way. And her brother laid her down in the cold Kentucky ground, and that's the way that it goes, that's the way. That's the way that it goes. Everybody's buying little baby clothes. Broken flat had to sell that pussy cat, and that's the way that it goes. That's the way, that's the way that it goes. Everybody's buying little baby clothes. That's the way that it is. Such a great song. Such a great song. <laughs> we tried to play covers that we wish we wrote for sure. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. <laughs> you know, can't deny the good ones. 
That's in the, they're another duo that's uh, fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, another uh, song we play out is um, off the Raisin Sand album with uh, Robert Plant and Alison Krauss. Uh, Rich Woman, which is a fun one to do too. And then we also do a Buddy Miller tune with his wife, nice. Julie, um, called Gasoline and Matches. We try it's to fun pull to them find where we the can, ones that, you know, you know we, I'll hear them and be like, oh, right, we gotta do Hey, the new uh, Rodney Crowell and Milo Harris album is really good. Yeah. Really good. I guess they just played at Telluride, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Aqua, too. Where are they going? Yeah, yeah it's sure. already sold out. So this next song is about drama. Yeah. There's no drama in folk music. No. <laughs> and that, that, this, this, this bucks the trend. Yeah. Ray, Ray calls it drama king, and I call it drama queen. <laughs> But uh, it was funny, I have to say, this morning I was in a coffee shop and this young girl was playing Deb Talon and all these people that I just love. And I said, wow, I really like your you know, song list. And she goes, well, my coworker doesn't. He thinks it's all dark and depressing. I said, well, welcome to the world of folk. <laughs> Those are the best songs. <laughs> but this one is, is about so much drama that I couldn't even write words. So this one ended up instrumental. <laughs> Now, I've seen you guys before play a double neck guitar. Yeah. Do you do that song with a double neck? We haven't, we haven't yet. But that's a good idea. We need we need to get a double neck that really has like a killer sound. Like a, a buddy of ours lent, lent us his, and it's a beautiful Alvarez double, but it um, it has one pickup for both necks, so oh, it really uh, yeah, it's yeah. hard to really define the parts. And one neck is a twelvey, uh -huh. so it's it's a little wow. Weird. I was looking on eBay and we found some interesting looking doubles, uh, but uh, we we haven't jumped yet. But it would be fun. That's pretty cool. Yeah. 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 It, it's on our list. Yeah. It's with all the list. other instruments we want to get. Right. <laughs> Port's gonna teach me how to play um, mandolin, though. That's my next one. So we're getting down to just a couple left, right? Yeah, we got about uh, ten minutes left here. Oh, okay. Unless we hear a standing O through the camera, but that's hard to get. <laughs> People keep hitting their shift key really hard. Would that key. do it? That's the thing with the internet. You can't. Um, it's only words. Really. Yay! 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 Well, let's trim it down a little bit right. then. Let's 
maybe do a So this is a song I, I uh, got a um, honorable mention at the Telluride Bluegrass Festival songwriting competition for, and uh, that in about 650 will get you a, a latte, I think. But um, it, it's always really, really super nice to be acknowledged by anybody for a song that you've written, no doubt. So I don't want to sound flippant. You did sound flippant, actually. I know, and I, I apologize. <laughs> but this song is called Fall Mountains. You ready, girl? No, hold on. And I declare I've had my fill of rosy thoughts and bitter pills to swallow And I sing Fall mountains, just don't fall on me, just don't fall on me Step in a spark in my eye. But when I am alone too long, I get to this place where everything feels wrong. And I sing, I sing. Four mountains just don't fall on me. Just don't fall on me. But the only way for me to make my way is to make this day like the only day I have left. Thanks. Great tune. Thanks. You got time for one more here? Yes, we sure do. Sure. Well, thanks everybody for watching tonight. Um, if uh, what, what do you guys got coming up for all the Colorado people out here that can see alive? We have a Boulder Farmers Market uh, beer and wine tent on uh, Wednesday. Wednesday night's our it's our last little freebie show that we do in Boulder. Um, but, but we started out playing a lot of those early on, and so we still like to do one every summer. It's our one and only, and then on Friday, Pearl Street, Pearl Street Pub. Pub, and then um, next Thursday, Jamestown Work, next Friday, uh, well, you can go to strangebirds.com. With a Y. a y. Yeah. Yeah, we got, our, we got our schedule up there. We keep it updated. And then we have that. like six yeah. shows in the next week and a half, I think. Wow. Yeah, this crazy Ray little section. Like eight. Wow. Crazy. Yeah, I got a couple with Court, <laughs> and, uh, and then four in a row with, with Carrie, so yeah, we're... We're ripping it up. You know, you got to get it while you can. That's great. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that's great. And you said uh, earlier <laughs> you do travel sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. We, we've, we've been starting to do a little bit of touring, and uh, and that actually is perfect setup for th this song because uh, the, the song came from the, the trials and tribulations and the fun and the goofy and the, 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 the crazy stuff that happens when you're traveling with your music on the road a little bit. And so, yeah. Uh, um, yeah, I think we wrote it right after we were in Austin last September, right? Could have been. Right that. And yeah. then, uh, and then uh, we went on, on the road on uh, the spring for a little spring tour in the Midwest. So, 
kind of tells a story. Yeah. Cool. yeah. Well, we uh, we really appreciate appreciate you guys being here. Thanks for coming down. Thanks for having we us. We so appreciate. It. Really, really fun. Appreciate you guys, it. you know, putting your time into this and uh, why well, it's just super nice. And for the people that are watching that want to re-watch it, um, it'll be on YouTube here next couple of weeks. We'll have it and we'll we'll post it on our website and your website and pa you know feel free pass it around and uh, the whole show on. Uninterrupted. So all the talking, you get all that stuff too. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Thanks so much. Thanks, Travis. <clears throat> so this song is called We Came Rolling. I started thinking it occurred to me There's something wrong with the life we lead We have a lot of fun and we let it bleed But we don't always make just what we need You water and water after you plant the seed But it takes a long time to grow a big weed We in fields sometimes Town to town Every place is nice like this Sometimes there's a few things we miss Like sound and lights People like you Place to plug in and take off my shoes Someone to pay you at the end of the night That's when you know everything's alright We came rolling Down the road, now we're rocking About to explode We came here To take you for a ride We'll play for food And rock most every night Come on, make some dinner, baby. It's been fun, your town is cool Went to the thrift store, played some pool at the bar Where we're going right after the show To do some shots, let it go Spend all the money that we made here tonight I guess we're even and everything's alright We came rolling down the road, now we're rocking About to explode, we came here To take you for a ride We'll play for food Every night, we came rolling down the road. Now we're rocking, about to explode. We came here to take you for a ride. We'll play for food and rock most every night. We'll play for food and rock most every night. Thanks a lot, everybody. Free range. Thank you so much, Travis.
so dark on that black Sunday. We shut the door, we pulled the shades and fell to our knees and prayed. Dust in our beds and in the kitchen sink and dust in our